So I hope you had a good weekend. Um, I haven't, I've done a bunch of grading in Android, but I haven't graded the, the midterm project. So I'll try to get that done uh, today or tomorrow and work on that. So I've, I think I've got almost everything graded except for those. Uh, so hopefully by the end of the week, uh, I'll have an updated grade in this class. So you know how you're doing uh, for that. Um, this week we're going to look at database access and, uh, you know, using a database in Android. Uh, pretty key idea. Almost every app out there is going to use a database to just store persistent data from one time the app is run to the next time. Also, in Android it's, it's difficult to pass objects from one activity to another activity. Uh, and to move them back and forth. So one of the ways we get around that is um, we'll use a database to store our information, our objects, and that sort of stuff. And we'll just pass like the uh, the primary key from activity to an activity. So if we're going uh, from one place to the other, just pass the primary key. And then uh, when we get to the other activity, we can use the primary key to pull up the the user's information or the, the product information or the sale information or something like that uh, provides it. Uh, it's interesting, Android, and uh, again, I'll try and see if we have time to mention that. Um, I think it was Unit 8. We tried to do a, an example just a week or so ago or so where we are trying to do uh, multiple tabs and moving data between multiple tabs and in class I tried to take some of the static data out so we could pass that information around and then on a Friday just remember we didn't get there so I've got that solution ready and I can show you how we pass that around we'll see if we can get to that sometime this week too um, but again I, I, we need to look at databases and how to use that uh, unfortunately one of the things Android tends to do is that it often doesn't make things very simple uh, to do. So accessing a database is not as simple as you might think uh, it, it should be. Um, it is not uncommon to have to create three new classes uh, and, and get them working together in order to access a database uh, and a table in a database. Um, we'll look at a, a simplified version today with just two classes added on to our main activity and, and using that. Um, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll also then look at more complicated situations. So it's not, fortunately it's not like C Sharp or Microsoft.net where I can just drag an, a database object and drop it on my screen and it connects up the database and I can then refer to any, any table or any uh, record within that table. Uh, basically it's all built in. So Android, I've got to build a lot of this in. Uh, for me. This isn't that uncommon in Java for Java. A lot of times we do for database access, you've got to do a fair amount of programming uh, here. Java's always kind of been that way where there's not a built-in standard across the board for data access. There's lots of different libraries and so, uh, and a lot of people are building it from scratch. Um, so we're going to look at an example from the Tectopedia website and book. Uh, there's actually three chapters that cover this introduction to SQL Lite. Um, so again, the database we'll be using is SQL Lite. I always want to spell it with two L's. SQL Lite. It's not. I should provide. It's like SQL Lite. SQ. Yeah. It, it only has one L in there. Um, so in most databases you've seen before, the database runs a separate application like Microsoft Access, SQL Server, Oracle, all those stuff. We run our, our relational database as a separate application on our system. In fact, in Visual Studio when you run that, you run a, it runs a copy of SQL Server as a background process for us. SQLite is different in that it is just a library we add on to our application that does the, the processing. So our, we don't have a separate database. It just tacks on this library to our database or to our normal Java code that 
gives us the SQL function, the, the relational database functionality. It's very portable, it's open source, so lots of people are using it. Really common out there um, uh, because uh, of its open source. Uh, and again, in a, in a version, in a small environment like a, a tablet or a, a phone, we're not going to be running MySQL or SQL Server, or big, a larger relational database in a separate process and intercommunicating with it. So uh, SQLite is really common in these sorts of environments. Um, we'll be looking at this. So if you go to UN Module 10, and look at the overview of the Android SQL Lite. We're going to go to that one first and talk about that. Uh, um, so we, some of this, of course, is old hat for you. Uh, databases, uh, data tables. So we'll, and we have uh, records, rows, and columns for this. So columns are our attributes, rows are individual records, and we have primary keys, uh, and they talk about some SQL. I assume we've got some basic SQL knowledge. Uh, so have you all had database modeling before this class? No? Yes? No? So um, if not, we'll, you'll see some uh, SQL, the SQL we're getting into is relatively uh, simple. Uh, again, you can do more complicated SQL, but for the examples we're doing, we don't need very much SQL. Um, this tutorial walks you through, you can actually connect up to the uh, SQL library and, run and check the databases. Uh, each database will be stored in, in a DB file with the app. So. Each app has its own folder out on, and, on the Android uh, process, and then inside that there's a databases folder, and inside that uh, whatever data, whatever you name your database uh, will be the name of the file name and .db. So that's the actual database uh, that we'll be connected to. And you can actually go out and look and check the database and uh, if for some reason you wanted to populate a full database out there ahead of time, you could grab this database, bring it into onto your, uh, you know, your desktop, and uh, interconnect it with some larger database system and populate it or send queries to it, uh, and then move it back out. So sometimes, you know, there's actually just a database file out there that you can uh, maneuver. But we generally won't be using this uh, command line interface, and we won't necessarily need to do that for what we'll be doing. Um, again, they talk about some simple commands, uh, how to insert, uh, how to delete, and again, we'll review those when we get to them. Um, here, this is what we want to look at is the Java classes for uh, Android. Um, I'm going to actually go, the, go over them in reverse order. Um, so. There's a SQLite opener, open helper. helper. Uh, this is used to create the database and upgrade it. So the first time we run our app, we'll create the database. Also, when we upgrade our app from one place to another, we usually have to do something with the database then. Uh, so we'll talk about that. So there's, uh, we have to implement, we have to link into an S, uh, to this. Uh, interface, and we have to have two methods defined somewhere. So we'll see those in our code for creating the database and upgrading. So this is where we'll create, give the database its name, give the table its name, give each field or attribute in the database its name and type. So we'll want a, a product name field that's a string. We'll want a product ID field that's a number or it's integer, and it will be primary key. So we'll this is where we'll create the database and set up all the table uh, tables and attributes in it. Um, once we have the database created, we'll access that in different ways. And uh, so we have some commands that we can call to run SQL on these. So insert, delete, query are the main ones, uh, and they run uh, the corresponding SQL commands. So insert will run an SQL insert command. Delete will run an SQL delete command. 
query runs an SQL select command because select is just a query in SQL. Um, there's also some commands that can um, run any SQL. So because this is an all of SQL, so there's an exec SQL that can execute any SQL command out there on our database. Um, but insert and delete uh, generally are, are just going to be commands. They don't return anything. But when we get into some complications, uh, when we do a query and we return a bunch of records. So we'll execute a query and we'll get a bunch of records, uh, basically a table result back uh, with columns and rows and that sort of stuff. So how do we handle that? Uh, so we have a data structure called a, a cursor. Uh, C-U-R-S-O-R -S that we'll be using. Um, oops. I'm going backwards here. Um, so have you, have you heard the term cursor referring to a uh, the result of a database? It's pretty, it, it's kind of, it's, it's used in a lot of different systems. We're turning things a lot of different systems will process things a little way, different ways. But again, this is a, a standard kind of structure for when we get a chunk of data back from a database. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, numbers like uh, .NET have moved on to different structures uh, than our cursor. Uh, so a cursor generally returns the whole result, holds the whole result of our database query in it. Uh, it's like a big array, basically. It's like a big array or a big table uh, and has some structure for it. So we'll get back a whole table, a big like array. So you can kind of think of a cursor like an array, uh, but it has an array with a pointer in it that tells us what record we're at inside that. Um, yeah, so it, it in Access, there used to be this, and I haven't used Access lately, but there used to be this common control uh, where you would say next record, previous, or previous record, next record, there might be a new record button in here, and it would be you are at record 10, uh, 412, or something like that. And then you could go previous record or new record, and just, as a control, you drop on the uh, access forms to move from record to record. Um, that's kind of visually what a cursor is. Uh, there's a command to say move to first. Oh, yeah, and see this cursor had the same thing. There was a, uh, a move to first and a move to the end button on that, too. So there's a move to first, move to end uh, command, move to last. Move to next, uh, and a move, generally a move to previous. I don't see that there, but I think there's also a move to previous one. Um, and an open and a close. Uh, get count to get the no total number of rows in your results. Um, and then this get, where once you're in a record, you could get the, the record, the, the information. Uh, the attributes at that spot. So if you're this spot in your array or your cursor, you could get the different attributes of that record. So let's look at how we're going to set this up. Um, let's walk through an example. So I'm going to walk through the same example from Techtopia and have you walk through the same thing. So why don't you run Android Studio uh, and bring up a new project. And then we're going to go through um, what they've done here is they've broken this up into two parts because they wanted to create the user interface first and they are doing some stuff they haven't covered uh, in, cl in class. We're just going to copy and paste the user interface in there, not go into too much detail in it. Uh, but we'll do this, this first. Again, in, in Unit 10, we'll do this Android Studio table layout and row layout uh, first to set it up. But it also kind of walks us through how to set up our, our example. So let's walk through this. Um, 
So this is what we're creating. We're creating a simple database of products. Uh, will every product have a product ID, a name, and a quantity? How many we have in, uh, of that product? Uh, we'll have a real simple interface. We can add a new product. So if we type in stuff and hit add, it'll add that product to the database. If we type in a uh, ID and hit find, it'll try to locate that product and display a product name and product quantity. If we have a, a product here, a product ID, and hit delete, it'll delete the product with that ID. So not, we can't even go next product, previous right. It's just a really simple interface uh, for products. So that's what we're going to set up. But first, we're going to set up this actual these labels and these text fields and these buttons. Uh, and we're going to use that. We we've been using like some relative layouts and linear layouts for our stuff. We're going to use something called a table layout for this. Um, very similar to HTML tables, if you use those, where we create a table, we create rows in the table, and then we put things in each row of the table. So this will be a whole table, this will be a row, and this will be one thing and another thing in a row. This will be another row, and this will be one thing, another thing in a row. Uh, I often just do this by creating a, a vertical linear layout and in the horizontal linear layouts, it's, it's similar in functionality. I don't know why they just didn't do that for this, but you could do that same thing. Okay, here it talks about creating our database project. So we're gonna go and do that. I'm gonna set this up so I can. Okay, so I've got Android Studio running. I'm gonna create a new project. Okay. So give it some name. Um, Uh, so name and then again the domain or the package that we'll be using. Uh, we'll have to kind of watch those because that, and again I'm not I'm going to give it our own name and not necessarily match the package out there. So we'll just have to watch that. Um, I, I actually have this saved all done out on the on the R drive classes. Uh, so again this is all done out there. But I think it's useful for you to go through and and copy and paste. It just doesn't take too much work to set this up on your own. So we'll just kind of work through this tutorial. I think it's useful. Uh, yeah, the minimum SDK we're not worried about really. We'll do a blank activity. Now, just so you know, it's going to want, it suggests we rename the activity um, database activity, but I find that confusing. So let's just leave it as main activity because that's what you're used to seeing. So just so you know, main activity is going to be the same thing as their database activity. And same with the other thing we'll have to watch is the layout. Activity main. So this is dot Java. And activity main dot XML is going to be the same thing as their uh, activity database. I just think it's going to be easier for you to remember these as uh, the main ones because that's what you're used to seeing, and we it it should be fine to leave them as this sort of stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that as main activity and activity underscore main. Leave it all like that. Finish. Let this start up. So again, we're going to create a linear layout uh, here. So we're going to replace our layout with this linear layout, a vertical linear layout, and then we're going to put in uh, rows 
uh, table layout inside that linear layout and table rows inside that. They walk you through manually creating those. We're not going to worry about those. Uh, we're just going to go in and um, find the code that we need for this layout. So down at the very bottom, or then they adjust the margin so everything fits nice and pretty. Finally, down at the bottom of this example is their layout they create. Linear layout with a table layout inside with table rows. And then inside each table row is a table view, two table view, or text views uh, that we have. And then I roll a button down at the bottom. So we're going to take this and um, they want it to go into activity database.xml. We just have to remember that that's our activity main. So we're going to open up our activity main.xml and paste this into that. Okay, if I stalled long enough, is this up and ready to go? Okay, so here's my activity main XML file. I'm going to go into text view. Uh, it's a relative layout. I'm just going to delete that all. Go into the website, find this long linear layout here. Grab that whole thing, this whole linear layout that's at the end of this, uh, right before the summary. Copy that and paste that in here. Now, they actually work with a string.xml file. Um, for simplicity, let's just redo the strings with simple text uh, here rather than putting them in a string.xml file. So let's see, what do we want this to say? Let's see if I have the. Here's my view I want. So I want product ID, product name, and product quality, quantity. So over here, on my form, I want the, the first one top here to be product ID. And the next one, I, I'm just changing the text, right? Double clicking and changing the text on each of these. So I've got product ID, product name, and product quantity. And then same here, I want it to say add, find. So the buttons, I'm going to double click on them and say add. I guess find and delete. Now in a real world, I would be creating the string.xml files and putting them in there and referring them here. But again, we're just, I don't, we're not teaching you how to do user interface today, so we just want to get this up and running. Um, okay, so here's my user interface. I got a couple text views here uh, that I can work with, that I have. Um, so I've got product name is a text field, product quality, and product ID. So these are all have IDs, and I've got my buttons. Buttons are just, I think, labeled button one, button two, and button three for now uh, for that. So how'd that go? Did that go too fast? Go too slow? Um, so that wraps up this tutorial. Now we'll get into the database. Oh, again, this part was just doing the... Um, Yeah. So do you started a new project, right? Yeah. Huh, why is it confused? Yeah, yeah I copy the right thing. Yeah. 
Looks like you have it copied in here twice. Let's do, this is the right thing. Let's do, let's do this again. There, that looks better. So now, just go in here, if you double click on it, type product ID. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the next part of the tutorial uh, where we're going to connect up the database and set up how the database works. So if I go, let's go into our So this is this last tutorial here uh, on the database, SQLite database and using that. Uh, um, so again, we just want to work with a simple product, uh, keep things really as simple as we can. So there's going to be a product ID, a product name, and a product quantity. Uh, the ID is an integer's primary key. Uh, the product name is just a text field, and the quantity is just an integer. So we're just going to keep it relatively simple. What we're going to do then is create a um, a Java class to store this information, and that's pretty common when we're working with databases in Java. Is you create a Java class with attributes that match the attributes in your database. So that you can take a record from your database, bring it up here, and use it to populate a, a, an, an object in your world. So we're going to create a, a product class here with an ID, a product name, and a quantity. OK, so I'm going to go on to Java. Uh, here, I'm going to go into my my. My main activities are already open. I'm not going to necessarily work with that. That's already there. I'm going to make a new object, a new class. So if you just right click on this folder, you should be able to say new Java class to create a new Java class. And it's going to be called product, capital P for product. So there's our product. Now, the package is already up here. So one thing I want to do is not delete the package, because all these uh, should be in the same package. So I'm just going to go out to, over the code here. And see the package up here? That's a different package. Don't grab the package. Grab. I'm just going to grab everything from the below the package. So public class product, grab all the way down to the bottom. So here's my public class. I'm just going to highlight that and delete it and put in the new product there. So I've just replaced, I've left the package the same because I want to be in my package. I just want to put the product in here. And again, this has uh, just three attributes, an ID, a product name, and a product quantity. Um, there's this, some people run off this standard program, Java programming thing where all your private variables are start with an underscore. I don't like that, but some people do that a lot. So this example, whoever did this is comes from that school of thought. So all of our variables here are private and they have an underscore underneath uh, starting with them. Oh, yeah, so don't choose the, des the test one, choose the main one. Um, if you right click on the Java or up higher and choose class, it asks you which folder to put it in. Uh, I, if you just uh, are in this folder already and right click create class, it'll just put it right in that folder. So that's a shortcut to watch. Um, so again, uh, we have our attributes here and again they just have underscores uh, with them 
Um, there's a constructor, an empty constructor that does nothing. <laughs> And then there's a constructor where we provide an ID, uh, a product name, and a quantity. And what is nice, what they do here is, again, so we're giving it an ID. We say this, under, uh, this dot ID, underscore ID, equals ID. And again, we're, when we have this, we're just taking the information they give us and saving it to our local variables for our product. And we just have to remember that the local variables have underscores, which, again, some people really like, because then they do. it's the same people who uh, every method has an M in front of it. Have you seen that? Where every method has a lowercase m if it's a private? I forget which one it is, but it's that same s school of Java programmers. Okay, we've got a, um, a product where we're a constructor or just given a product name and a quantity. Um, and then we have the getters and setters, set ID, get ID, set product name, get product name, set quantity, and get quantity. And there's nothing special about these as far as the spelling or stuff of the getters and setters. They're just whatever the people did. Uh, there are other spots, like in C Sharp, where you need setters and getters named certain ways. Uh, this, it doesn't matter. We'll be, call we'll be calling these explicitly in our code if we need to. So pretty simple class for a product. Uh, straight out of Java 2, right? Um, okay, so where are we in our tutorial? Okay, so we created our product. Now we're going to implement a database handler. Um, so we need to create an object called MyDBHandler. And this is going to do our open and create database. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to go in my folder here and do right click new. Again, if I was up a level, if I do new Java class, it's just going to ask you, do you want it in the main or your test one? And you just want it in main. So if you're if you do it at a high enough level, ask you just make sure you put it in main. And the class is my DB helper handler. You might want to watch the capitalization if you're going to, because we're bringing code from other places. So it is doing a capital M, uh, lowercase y, capital D, capital B, and H. And I keep saying ha helper, but it's handler, right? Handler. My DB handler. Oops, somehow I got this in the wrong. See, somehow I got this in the wrong package. Uh, so I, I want it up in this package. So it should, all these files, all Java files should be together in the same package. So it's not. So I'm just going to, I assume I can just drag this and drop it up here. And it'll refactor it and redo the package name. Okay, that's better. So I should see the package name up here. <laughs> for me. And now I'm going to paste some code in here. Um, so our, every time we use a database, we've got to have one class that extends or inherits from SQLite Open Helper. So we do this inheritance, and it gives us all the SQL functionality we need. Um, as part of that, it has to implement two abstract methods, an onCreate method and an upgrade, on upgrade method. So it has to implement both of these methods uh, that work with this SQLite database. These uh, are both uh, have to import from this. Uh, we need both the SQLite database and SQLite he Open Helper as part of this. Um, I'm not going to, what they do is they, they show you this with an empty on crate and an empty upgrade. And then they walk you through saying, um, this is what we're going to want to do is put this information in here. And we still have an empty on crate and an empty on upgrade. And then they walk you through and say, this is our on crate and this is our on upgrade. Okay, so it gets kind of confusing. Um, I would. Scroll down past the first one and find the 
the on my DB handler that has the variables in here, all these static variables, and copy this set of code over there. Okay? So it's not the first one, which is basically empty, it's the second one. And again, I don't want the package. I want to leave, leave out the package. I, I, I can do the imports. Those are fine. So I'm just going to grab this code. And it has all these static variables and a constructor we're calling here. I'm going to replace my DB handler with that. So here's what I've got. I've got public class MyDB handler extends SQLite open helper and it has all these private static final database version, database name, table product, column ID, column product name, column quantity. Uh, so it has all those things. Uh, it has a constructor here for MyDB handler and it has an empty on create, empty on upgrade. And now I'm going to grab the code for the on create and on upgrade that's given back in the tutorial. And then I'm going to walk you through all this code. So there's an on create code here that I'm going to paste into this on create. And there's some on, and below it is an on upgrade code I'm going to paste. So paste in the on create and the on update code here. For now. Uh, and often this is all of our, that our, our database handler will have is this on create and on upgrade uh, portion here. Um, so let's talk about what we're doing here. We're going to create a database with um, a couple fields. There's going to be an ID field in our database, and it's going to be our primary key. There's going to be a product name field. Product name. And since this is a database field, there's going to be no spaces in that product name, all one word. And there's going to be a quantity field, oops, all lowercase too. So that's going to be our, our database uh, table. We're going to call this table, it's going to be called product. Products. And that table is going to be inside a larger database. That's called product DB. And databases have the DB extension. Um, so. To help us use this, I've got lots of strings here. I'm going to declare constants for all of these strings. I've got this string, the name of the database. I've got this string, the name of the product. And I have a string for each of my column names. So I'm going to declare variables for all of that, static final variables to hold all those. So that's what I have here. Uh, this is database name. And again, since these are another practice is that for constants, we declare them final and we also keep them all in caps. This is our table name. And these are our field names. Our fields are column. So this one is. I should be right. I just cannot write in all caps. It's something really hard for me to do. So column ID, uh, the pro 
this one is column product uh, quantity. Okay, so that's all this is doing is, here's the name of all of our fields, here's the name of our table, here's the name of our database. And again, if we wanted to add, create, you have more things we could do. We could do this without this. We could just put all these strings inside our code and not have very, you know, static variables, constants for all of them. But again, uh, when we code, we generally don't like putting uh, things in it. It's nice, it moves it all out there, makes it really easy to change your database structure later on. There's also a database version. Um, we'll, we're not going to go over that too much, but when we upgrade an uh, app from one version to another, um, you, we sometimes have to change the database and we want to make sure the database matches the version of our app that we're running. So again, the version number is just used to kind of keep track of what version it is. Uh, and we won't go over that uh, too much. Um, the constructor here uh, simply calls the parent constructor. Uh, it specifies the database name and the version number. And so this kind of sets up the database itself with that constructor. Then we call in on create, we have to write the SQL to create the database. And you remember writing SQL to create database, create database, the table names uh, and their, their values. That's all this is doing is writing the data, doing SQL to create a database. If you don't know SQL, just Google SQL create table and there's lots of good tutorials. It's not, uh, all we do is say create table and then we put in the table name and then we put parentheses and then column ID. And it, this is a lot of mix of constants and strings. So sometimes it's, it's useful to write this out. You know, what is this actually writing out? So if I were it's just, I'm going to, create the string without uh, without all this stuff in here and just put so the table products is actually just product so this uh, is there and then I start with my column ID is just underscore ID and so that's why integer primary key and then I include the product name oops here And then I, oops, uh, do text. So sometimes I actually uh, run the debugger and see what this string actually looks like to verify it. Sometimes I actually just take out the variables to make sure everything works well. So like here, the quote uh, plus column identifier quote uh, plus quote. I'm just going to replace that with the actual variable uh, amount up here, which is this quantity. And then we end up with a bracket at the end. So this is the SQL command that's being executed. Create table products, parenthesis ID, integer, primary key, comma, product name, text, comma, quantity, integer, parenthesis. So that is the string I'm creating. And that's just SQL, right? That's standard SQL to create a table. Um, I'm going to comment that out. I don't really need that. But that's all this, all this plus and this mix of these constants and these strings are doing is creating that SQL command. So that's often you, you write out the SQL command, tell you the truth. Sometimes I just run Microsoft Access 
or SQL Server, some visual thing. I create the table and I look at the and I just grab the SQL from that and paste it over to Java. And then I, where the 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 constants are, I just put quotes around them and insert the constants names. So, so that's creating my table. Um, again, we're not going to worry right now about upgrading our database. And doing that set. So right now, when you upgrade the database, it deletes all the old data and recreates uh, the new data. Good luck on your interview. So it deletes the old table and recreates a new table. Um, you probably don't want to do that whenever you upgrade. It would be really bad if you upgraded from your your app and you lost all your contacts or something like that. I still every once in a while when I upgrade. I'm amazed at how bad the upgrade goes on Android. I mean, it deletes or loses my preferences or settings or stuff like that. Uh, don't like that. OK, so that's my database uh, stuff. Now, we're going to add some more stuff in there. Now, um, basically, we've got a product. class, and then we've got this my DB helper class, uh, and then we've got this data, and we've got this database, the main activity class, that are going to talk to each other. Uh, and both of these are going to use this product uh, object in some ways to, or another. Um, we're going to put, often we have, a, we have a DB helper class with what we have in it. And we have another class for the data access stuff, the, all the SQL commands to insert, delete, and stuff. Um, later on this week, probably on Wednesday, we'll look at an example with that. But um, in this first example, we're going to put everything, put the data access stuff in with the in here, uh, rather than putting it in a separate class. So after the upgrade uh, on upgrade and on create, I'm going to add a couple more classes here to do the basic things I want, and that's uh, an add a product. So I'm going to grab the add product and paste it in there. Grab the find a product and paste it in here, and then grab the delete product and paste it in here. So let's just look through those. So again, I grabbed these three products and pasted them into this one file. Um, add product. I'm given a product. So I'm given one of these objects. Uh, again, remember it has the ID, product name, and quantity in it. So I'm given a full product. Uh, now I'm going to add, so this is a Java object. I'm given a Java object. I'm going to move that out to the database. So um, I, I have to set the pro or set up my column names. Uh, so basically I'm going to uh, create what I call a values object here, which is like a new row. So I'm basically creating a new row, uh, and and uh, called values. So I create a new row here, and inside inside my cursor, inside my table, actually in my database, uh, and I want to put, uh, and I I'm using the product name field and store the product name there. And I'm going to put the quantity and store the quantity there. I'm not going to put in the ID because the ID is set up to auto increment. 
So again, if I'm adding a new product, it should add the ID for me. It should add one, you know, create the ID for me. So I just have to do the quantity and the product name. Um, I then have to get a handle on the writable database on the database. Uh, and again, this class provides that. This, um, I'm inheriting the SQLite Open Helper, so I've got that available. So I've grabbed the database and I do db.insert, and then my the table that I have. Make sure I know what table it's going. So I have a variable called table name, and then I send the values that I created up here, and then I close the database. Um, same with if I'm going to find a product in the database, I'll be given a product name and I run a, a query, select star from uh, my table name where the column name is equal to things. Now again, sometimes it's hard to structure your SQL. Um, if you, when you do this a little bit, you start getting used to you. What I do is I write out the SQL like I want it. And then I look and say, okay, this is the, the name of the table. I have a variable, I have a constant for that. So I put in a quote, a plus, uh, and then that variable, another plus, and a quote, and I continue on. Uh, and the same, same, here's a column name. Uh, I know it should be product name, uh, lower case, but I have a variable called product, column product name, so I'm gonna do that. So again, you've got a, create your SQL query mixture of string and these variables out there. Have you guys done created SQL that way? Like in certainly in, in uh, server side, in um, web stuff, you do that frequently, right? Yeah, some places, I, I, yeah, it's pretty kind of, you, if you haven't done it before, you will. I'll just tell you that. So we create our, our select command. Um, we grab a, an access to our database. We execute our raw query here. Uh, and we get a cursor back uh, from that. Um, and um, in this case, um, we are moving to the first item in that cursor, uh, assuming there is one, and then we're we're setting we're we're creating a product from that cursor. So we're grabbing the uh, different values from that cursor and storing them in our product. So basically, we are pulling information from our database and our fields in our database field zero, one, and two, and copying them that into our product object. And then we're going to return that project object. Um, and the last thing we delete, if we have a product name, um, and this is kind of weird. Uh, what I thought they'd do is just um, given a product ID, delete it. But they're actually grabbing a product name, and they're writing SQL, going out there and finding a product getting the, call, the the ID field from that, and then writing a new database command to delete that based on the column ID, uh, the ID field that they've got from the previous query. Uh, so again, if we just have the product name, we have to go out there, find, uh, do an, a select, find the record, grab the ID field from that, and then use the delete with that. Because we have to delete with the primary key. Otherwise, I guess we could delete too many. Because uh, I thought you could delete with the secondary key. I mean, not with, with any field. Can't you just delete all records where uh, product name equals some value? I think you can write that in SQL. So I don't know why they're not doing that. It would be interesting to change this to do that. I don't know why they're not doing that. Um, okay, last thing we have to do is change our main activity. Um, 
We've got to uh, change, put in our button click a uh, actions. They're putting these right into the XML field, the layout field. Uh, so they have these on click for new button, look, uh, new product, look up product, and remove product, and then they delete those. So I mean, they define those. So open up your XML file for activity main. Go into the text view. Um, and find your buttons. Your buttons should all be down at the bottom. There should be, at the bottom there should be three buttons. And for each one of these, we're going to put in uh, the on click method. Watch this n tag in here, the, the backslash greater than. You don't want to lose that, or you don't want two of those. So I'm going to grab this on click new product, which is on the first button, and put that here. I'm going to grab the on click lookup product and put that in the second one. And the third button should be this on click remove product. So I should I should still have my three button tags and ending tags. Uh, for button, uh, it should be the on click should be new product. For button two, the on click should be lookup product, and for button three, the on click should be remove product. Now I'm going to go into my main activity.java and paste some code there. Um, I'm not going to copy and paste this whole thing. Just what we need, uh, so we can see it again. We need these texts. We need uh, to access our different text views, our edit text stuff. So I'm going to copy those uh, here and it, right before my on create, I'm going to declare my variables. Uh, each of them have to be imported, so I'm going to hit Alt Enter to import those. So those will let me access my things. Now in my on create, I've got to <coughs> uh, paste my, my code for accessing my IDs. So again, I'm going to look inside the on create and just grab that. Now one of the reasons I'm not grabbing all this is like their activity is called activity underscore database and my activity is called activity main, I mean my layout field. So uh, I. Our, our two things won't match. So I'm just going to grab where we initialize these three variables and on create and paste that in here. So I've got, so far I've just got this code is new. That's no, not working. That's oh, blinking. Cool. I like that. I like this one blink too. Whew, isn't that fancy? <laughs> so, I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's my code I've added in here. Okay, I'm tired of that now. Can I stop that? No, I don't know if I can stop that. <laughs> Okay, so that's all the code I have is for them. Now I'm going to paste in my new methods. So down here at the bottom, I should have three new methods for my different button clicks. So if I look at the code, uh, there should be code for the new product, look up product, and remove product. I want to grab all that code. Don't grab the dot, dot, dot. That's not actual Java at the bottom. Dot, dot, dot is not actual Java. So grab all that code. So new product, look up product, and remove product. I'm going to put that in to my code here. Um, there's one thing, this view is not imported, so I'm going to Alt Enter. So we add the import for the view. Uh, 
So let's just look. When I hit the new product button, um, I create a new DB handler. So when I hit the button, it creates one of these DB, oh, I keep running DB helper. It creates one of these DB handlers uh, uh, here uh, for me to use. Uh, and then with that, I can add products or stuff like that. So I have a new DB handler. Um, I then create a new product uh, specifying the string from the product ID and the string and the number from the quantity. Uh, I have to do ha this one, the, the quantity, uh, I'm reading it in as a string and I need it as an integer, so I have to convert that to an integer and then create my product. So here's I'm creating a product. I pass, I call my DB handler and I call add product and pass the product into that. And then I reset my text boxes to empty. Look up product, I do something similar. I'm grabbing the product name. I am then, then calling, uh, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, creating a DB handler. Uh, I'm then calling, with that DB handler, I'm calling find product and passing in the product name. So product box dot get text dot two string. So if I look in my XML file, why is it doing product box? I'm confused why it isn't doing, why is, shouldn't, why is it saying product, oh, duh. so for some reason when I declared my local variable here for the product name, I named it product box. So that, this is my product box, is my local variable that's referring to the product name field uh, on the, in the form. So that's why I'm using product box, of course. And so I'm calling the DB handler. So again, this main activity creates a DB handler and, and uses that. And then this product is what we kind of pass between the two to hold our data. So if we run this, do we have time to run this? No, we don't. Well, if you were to run this, <laughs> um, you, you can run it. You can add products. Uh, there and you can delete products and you can search for a product. So you, should, you can try that out if you want, but we're going to wrap things up for today. How was introduction to databases? So. Oh, Wednesday we'll look at a more complicated example. Friday we'll do an in-class activity. I think I hid the assignment in class activity because I haven't checked, I haven't verified them. They're the old versions of them and I haven't tried them with Android Studio. So if I didn't hide them, don't run them yet. So not, you know, that you're going to be working whole week ahead this time in the semester. <laughs> oh. Sure. It's about uh, meaning process. Okay. Like as I'm done with all the requirements for the meaning project, but I'm still working on it. And I was wondering, so what I was trying to do, I'm trying to make the apps and a message, like okay. a message, right. like on the background, like okay. Okay. So, 
otherwise okay. see it doesn't. So and the more I press, the more it sends me. Uh, okay, so every time you yeah. you press it, it sends you a text yeah. message. Yes, it's standard, <laughs> but it doesn't notify. I know I have to make this look right. So right. Yeah. yeah. Or also, again, you, you could pop up a toast message. Yes, and that's what I'm trying to do. But, uh, sure. Here you got this toast. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Um, I think it's got to be longer than that. Let me, let me find it. Let me find an example. Um, so it's Okay. So I think you're missing the dot show in your toast messages. So you go toast dot make text con 
tag, get application SMS and link show. Oh, oh you got the dot show. Huh. Um, application context. Two years ago. I go when I go to bed, but I always want to go to that. Right? Two, three, two. So, yeah, you, you can't just call get here if you try to do get application context. That's not going to work. Are you taking both this and so which, that's an okay, yeah. Now, when is that? Oh, that's the sent. So you should be getting a message back that it's been sent? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Is the how I'm thinking for some reason that that method is not getting called. How do you that you know that this SMS sent receiver? So what is that supposed to? I haven't seen that. What does that do with the sent SMS sent receiver? So this I kept this so that it cannot find the messages deleted or not deleted. Uh, and so you these are to be able so to that to if it's not delivered, once you press it, so you really it really 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 talk to a server. Yeah, but what calls that? Uh, do you know? What what interface calls that? Yeah, you did change your mind on that. For example, yeah. Because this is what's run when you click the button, right? So if you put in a uh, a toast, put a toast message there. Uh, you know, if you were to copy a toast message, just yeah, just that toast message. Just copy that one and put it up uh, above, yeah, and put it inside that one somewhere. Yeah, anywhere. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I thought you already had a toast in here. Yeah, just say get like you did down there. Try get activity. No, I guess. Um, see how this one down here, you just say get activity, yeah. use that instead of the get application toast. Let's just change the message here. Uh, okay, now I'll try to rerun that. It's hard with these projects to figure out where the error is locating. You know, is it a problem with the toast message? Is it a problem with your method not being called? You know, so you've got to kind of try to figure out what's what's being called when, and try to you know kind of debug it, try to isolate the error a little as much as we can. So okay, let's try this. So we see. Okay. Okay. So that works, but. 
Uh, so the toast messages work, I mm -hmm. think, or at least that one does. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, um, this method, um, so right now you have it inside these switches. It would be interesting mm -hmm. to put it outside the switch just to see if the method is being called at all. Uh, and so I would debug it that way, you know, try to figure out if that's, and if not, you know that method isn't being called. So to look at that, okay? I'm going to help Michael with okay. So, we need to have a more time that I thought this working, so work on this. Okay. But I got some done, and it's getting away for the rest. Okay. But, um, yeah, I never did get the pictures to be big, so. Okay. That, I don't know if that's just going to have to be the size they are. Right. That's. I was thinking about doing five businesses. Okay, uh-huh. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds Even good. Even if it doesn't take up the whole. Right, that's so, okay. Because I, I would make them lay out and look nice. But right, like, yeah. Every time I do that, you screw something else. Right, so, okay. So uh. I was thinking three or three to five. Yeah, right. three to five should be it good. It take up half the thing, but I Right, put, yeah. Um, that would be okay. description of what the app is down there. Yeah, that would make um, sense. So yeah. then, two things. I'm getting some errors here, and I have this empty ID string, and that always happens. And um, I don't remember so why. So what happens often is that if you're, I think, text view. If you have something like this and you click on it, mm -hmm. um, you may have you may accidentally delete this ID field or something like that, okay. or uh, what's there. So I think we just sometimes when you're just hitting stuff, it's just just oh. it just needs some ID, and we're not even going to use that variable. Uh, so yeah. so then and then we'll go again. You could change it here also, but that's generally. What what causes the the problem okay. is that I think sometimes and I've seen it with other students too yeah. when you you're just kind of trying to click and you actually and then you you've hit somehow you've deleted that so okay, okay. and then um, for my next step if we if I wasn't adding more okay I'm trying to like figure out what my next step is because I know on here I have a second layout. And my second layout will say, like, um, I'm going to have that, like, put the title of the of the business. Right. A picture. Uh-huh. Um, maybe a oh, location. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then a call button. Right. Um, but, so, that would be setting it up, like, right here, right? I don't have this. So I would need to put like text, um, yeah. name for the business yeah, no, name, the right. um, summary, could be like the summary of the, of what, um, the business is. Yeah, right. Um, location could be the location, and then I would add a button for calling. Right. So that would be my next step, right? Right, is to create the sec the, the detail yeah. XML layout. It would be layout. kind of like this. Right, kind Here's of like what that. Me. Why doesn't this show anything except this? Is that because we're not tying anything in here? Like, see how this just says large text? This uh -huh. is a calendar app. Okay. So when you run it, it shows something. Is that right. You, you click on something. Um, because like here in the code for the second activity, mm -hmm. um, we like we have a uh, we have variables for the text view title and the summary, mm -hmm. and we link those into the IDs of the title and the summary right. on the text right. view, so and then and then on the on create. Right away, we do TV title dot set, set text to this or that, right. and or and then TV summary set text. So right away, when the page lo when this activity loads, we overwrite mm -hmm. whatever's there. Okay. So if I were doing this for the next one, I, for my 
for my business contact app. Right. I would do the way I set out the layout first. Or yeah. Next, and then I would go to the second activity, and I would use the. I would have like. Uh, kind of like. How do we switch back? Yeah, I, I switched oh. to the. I, I think you want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So like, I could put here. I would put business title. Uh huh. Business summary. Right. Um, business location. Or a picture maybe right there. Right. And then a button to call. Uh huh. Um, so then I would say like, for example, this could be. A text box called name or something, and then I would put. I would have to define them here. Right. But here's why I'm confused. What do I do with this on my? So, somehow you've got to send some information from your main activity to the second activity mm -hmm. for what button they clicked on. Yeah. Uh, so I would just send, like in this case, they sent the event number. I would just say, send maybe the business number or something like that. Okay, so how do I define, the part I'm confused about is how do I define the business number? So, when the main activity, You'll, when you, oh, that'll be in the main. yeah, when, when you click on a button, you'll, you'll call the second activity. Okay. Um, and so let's look in this one on how it works. Here, when we, we click on a button, we create an intent for the second activity, and then we start that activity. But before we start it, we, um, we send it, there's, this extra is this storage between activities. Mm -hmm. So we put uh, the number one in the event number. Right. Uh, so that when we get to the second activity, we pull, we say extras dot get string with the event number, and we pull the event number out of there. Okay. Okay, so you could send. Can I call that business? You yeah, can, and can you could you could send the business name. Yeah, here we did event number. You could send. You could say business, business name or business number. You know, because again, it's just strings. Uh, so you would send that. Uh, so you, you, depending on what button they clicked on, you'd send a different business name over here. Okay, so I don't here. necessarily define that in the layout. I define it. In the code. <clears throat> right. Yeah, in the code, and then here. We, we have a check in, this is our second activity, we pull the business name out of the extras from the first activity. So now we have the business name. Mm -hmm. And then now we check if the business name equals Best Buy, yeah. we dis display the Best Buy information. Set the, set the text to Best Buy. Right, yeah. Title and, to right, Best Buy all that stuff. Right, right that yeah, right. Does that make okay. sense? Um, yes, I think so. Okay. Well, why don't you work on it some more, and then if you need to find me again. I'm going to try and finish it by midnight today. Okay. Um, I'll, send, I'll send you what I have by midnight. Okay. I think uh, I think from what I understand, uh -huh. I'll be able to get... Right. Close? Yes. Close. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I'm looking okay. forward to it. All right. Okay. I'm less confused at least. <laughs> I was planning on working on it over break. Uh huh. So the hotel I was at did not have Wi Fi. Oh. How do, how do they even make well, hotels without Wi Fi these well, days? They it's, a, it's a 90 year old hotel. Uh huh. They have Wi Fi, but oh. they have $20 to pay for it. Yes. So, I hate that. Because it was kind of a nice hotel. Yeah. I don't Wi -Fi. understand why the more expensive hotels charge for Wi Fi. No, just, I think if I'm paying. Yeah. Wi-Fi. Right. It's like, you know what? Sorry, I'm not paying 20 Right. Yeah. I just, that just doesn't seem fair to me.